Welcome to part two of my client's six bed HMO conversion. As you can see here, this is where the existing lean-to was. We have now knocked that down and we've now built up the extension to the plate level. As you can see, we've got the scaffolding up at the minute and all the materials here ready to start the flat roof. We're gonna be putting a GRP flat roof on this. So we've got an opening for a French door here. So the tenant of this room is gonna have their own access. Um, so as you can see, you've got the driveway down here. So we can fit three or four cars potentially at the back here and they have their own entrance. Yeah, so this is bedroom number three on the ground floor. So this door here, which is locked at the minute for security, uh, will lead into the kitchen. Uh, we're gonna be doing some stub work here to make the ensuite. And as you can see, we've got the waste, which goes into the drainage down the side of the property. Coming on inside, we've got quite a lot of changes. The first thing you'll notice is this doorway's been moved across. Uh, so we've blocked up the existing opening and moved that across here and got a concrete lintel in above. So in bedroom one, we've got these two back-to-back -back en suites. Um, now there's two reasons why we've done these en-suites back to back. One of them is because in bedroom number two, it wouldn't be big enough for the amenity standards to have the en-suite in there. And also, it makes it easier and cheaper to run the first fix services. So as you can see, we've only had to run one four inch waste pipe. And because of how we've got it structured with, with it being back to back, it means that we are able to get the run required um, to tap into the existing soil stack on the outside of the building. In each of the en-suites, we're gonna have a toilet, we're gonna have a towel rail, obviously a shower and a vanity unit. And we've got all the first fix in ready for that, as well as a uh, four inch for the extractors, lights, etc. So originally we were thinking there's gonna be a lot more damp works that need to be done, uh, but we had a second opinion come round. And basically the only joists that we need to change are the ones by this bay window and a couple in the hallway. So we've been able to crack on and get a lot of the works done downstairs. I don't know if you can see here, but we've had to do some membraning on a lot of the external walls uh, just to provide that extra extra barrier for the damp penetrating through. So yeah, coming to bedroom too, it's a little bit of a mess in here, um, just because there hasn't been too much first with first fix work going on. As you can see, this is the membrane which is going on all the external walls, um, just as a sort of last resort for any damp issues. So at the minute, there's cavity insulation causing the damp to wick. Um, so this is going to be the last resort. We are going to be getting it all vacuumed out, all the insulation, as well as applying some like masonry creams and whatnot on the outside also. And we've got the first fix for the kitchenettes just here, and it leads into the ensuite for bedroom number two. So what we've done in this ensuite is we put the toilet on this side just to minimise the distance for that four inch waste. That way we can get the crep run on it and we don't have to dig down this deep on the external side of the property. So yeah, coming on through to the kitchen, uh, we've had to take this wall down because it was completely loose. You could literally shake it with your hand and it was nearly falling down. Uh, so what we've done instead is we've just got some stud work here um, and we can see we've started the first fix for the kitchen as well. Coming through to here, this is going to be the second kitchen. Uh, we still need to raise this floor level and we're also going to be raising this door and this window up so so they match the soldier courses of this window and the windows of the extension and it also means because these, these are just clay tiles at the minute uh, there's no damp of membrane and there's no insulation so this would be a really cold floor otherwise so we're going to be raising that floor level up so we've got a continuous floor level from the main house into this kitchen and into the extension as well so it's all running through flat. As you can see, we've got a lot of cables dangling down. Now these are waiting to be ran through into the extension, um, but because the roof's not on yet, which should be done by next week, we haven't run anything through just yet, apart from the plumbing. Um, but the reason for that is, is because when it gets screwed in, that's gonna be sunken in beneath the floor on that raised floor level that I was speaking about earlier. Coming on upstairs, this used to be the doorway into the shared communal bathroom. This has now been blocked up and an opening has been made from this side, giving access to the ensuite for bedroom number four. And this is all in the first fix as well. But we've got a toilet going here, vanity going here, and we've got a nice big shower tray going across the back there. You can also see throughout the property we've got flow and returns for the heating. So previously the house only had electric heating. So what we've done is we've done a whole new plumbing system for the ensuite and a whole new flow and return system for the radiators and the heat in the property. Coming through to bedroom number five, this is where we've done quite a bit of work. So previously I was mentioning about the structural stub work that we've done. Um, we did have to change all that slightly because the 
the structural engineer thought that the joists were running that way, they're actually running that way. So originally this board was going to be taken back to here and it was going to be stub work, but we've had to keep as much of the load bearing board as possible uh, just so then we can put in the structural stub work and brace it together. What we've also done is we've also run the services through the stub work up into the boiler room in the loft. The upstairs walls as well have had that same membrane and hard wall as the downstairs walls. So we've gone into bedroom number six with this stub work, uh, but it gives us space to have a nice kitchenette in here and then also have a nice big ensuite bathroom to the left here as well. In bedroom number five, you can see what we're doing for some of the first fix as well. So each room is going to have a TV and an aerial point. And we're also going to have ethernet points as well. Um, we were thinking about putting Wi-Fi boosters in. We thought it'd be more beneficial just to put an ethernet point in each room. Therefore, if someone's working from home or someone wants to have their own booster, they can just plug it in themselves off of that rather than having, say, two or three Wi-Fi boosters hardwired in throughout the property. Um, each room will also have an intercom system, but unfortunately that hasn't arrived yet, so we haven't been able to first fix that. But yeah, each room will have like a little phone and a buzzer with entry on the door also. So yeah, you can see why we've had to do the structural stub work, not only to make the space for the ensuite and the kitchenette for bedroom number five, but to also make the doorway big enough, um, which is why we've got this dog leg stub work off to the left here, which then makes the opening big enough for a doorway, which also means that this uh, existing shared bathroom is now in bedroom number six and is now the ensuite. So bedroom number six, even though the stub works cause a little bit of space to get lost, we've still got a really good sized room and we've still got space for a kitchenette in this corner here and obviously we've got the ensuite over there. You can see up here where we've got the new beams coming across and it's all raised up. You can see what the first fix is looking like for the kitchenettes. Um, now they are only going to be very basic kitchenettes so they're not going to have like a hob or an oven. They're just going to have a sink they're going to have an undercount fridge and then they're going to have a couple of sockets on the top for maybe like a kettle or a microwave. These aren't meant to be fully self-contained studios. This is meant to be a six bed HMO. To avoid having to pay individual council tax bandings, we want to have the tenants using that main kitchen downstairs for most of their cooking and washing.